People here are different. Koreans' objective is more of money than happiness. And I think Philippines, they would choose happiness over money. Throughout my time living here in the Philippines, I've met a lot of Koreans through school, through this channel, and even through their own friends of friends. But like Filipino OFWs, these Korean friends of mine come and go from time to time. Some have left for good, and some visit back for vacations. Last 2020, we made a video about South Koreans who moved back to South Korea. Today, we're making a video about Koreans who came back to the Philippines. Hi guys, I'm Hoso Kim, you can call me Blake. So I stayed in here, I think like five years. And 2020, after pandemic starts, I went back to Korea, and then came back. Uh, in 2021. Hi, it's Charmy Charm. I was born and raised in Manila for 21 years and I left when I was in second year college. Yeah, around so 2016. Like, oh, it's 2016. Yeah, and stayed in Korea for about six years. Wow. Hi, I'm Augustine. I arrived at the Philippines 2015. I stayed here for five years. I went back to Korea because of the pandemic and I started to serve in military. And I am discharged on August. And I'm just back in the Philippines like five days ago. And I'm really excited to start my new life in the Philippines again. Okay. Why did you originally leave the Philippines? In my case, I lived here for such a long period of time. So I had this romance about Korea. I wanted to like be a student there. You know those cute Korean <laughs> uniforms? I wanted to have Korean friends. Like after school, I want to eat tteokbokki with them. Just like those <laughs> dramas. Wow. But when I went to Korea, it was like the reality over there hit me so hard. <laughs> it wasn't about those K-dramas. It was so hard to study there. And since I I have no friends, I had to start from the bottom. But right now, I've already completed, adjusted my life there. I just wanted to start a new life in Korea, the life that I never had. Basically, I left because of the pandemic. Before I started the pandemic, there was a volcano issue. So I stayed in my house like a month already. And then right after that, pandemic hits. So I stayed in my house for more than three months. The pandemic in Philippines, we had to stay in home. And then only one person get out of the house to oh, buy the groceries. Yeah, true. So there was so much stress about it, so I just wanted to go back to Korea and then see my family. In Korea, it wasn't that strict because you just had to wear a mask, get the vaccines, and then no strict rules. Same as him, and I didn't have a plan to go to military. I kept taking online class in Korea, but I felt like, why am I paying the same tuition fee, but I can't go to school and meeting my friends there? So I submitted my LOA form, and I applied for military. What reverse culture shocked you in Korea? Actually, I do not have much. The only thing I I felt was there is no gravy sauce, there is no <laughs> there's no gravy sauce, there is no rice on the chicken. Mm -hmm. Those kind of <laughs> yeah. Those kind of small stuff. Not so much for me. In Korea, like everything got fast. I stayed in the Philippines so long. And then it was really long time I didn't go to Korea, but everything go fast comparing to the Philippines. That's why I even had a hard time to adjust Korean speed again. <laughs> and then even in the like government like issuing pro problem, everything was so convenient. So I prefer it, but I really miss the Philippine foods too and the people. Well, maybe for me, I guess it's about the safety of Korea. Like I got shocked that everybody left their bags in ca the cafes or mm. when they had to go to the bathroom. But me, I still bring my like cell phone wherever I go. I don't leave it because it's cell phone. You could just snatch it. <laughs> and another reverse culture shock that I had was like whenever I take the subway or the bus, I would see even young kids would commute on their oh, own. Yeah. And they know how to go to one place to the other place to their destination without anybody's help. Like if it was in the Philippines, their parents would like drive them with their cars. But these kids would just do it by themselves. That's one of the culture shock that I got. What did you miss about the Philippines the most when you were back in Korea? Friends. True. Yeah. Friends. People here. Friends. People here are different. They're very just chill, calm. My friends in Korea are fun, but like, oh, I have to study first, then mm. I'll do this. Filipinos, they're just a different type of fun. Enjoy today, worry about tomorrow. Mm. That kind of mindset. <laughs> I also wanted to say the same thing. In Korea, everyone lives a busy life. I'm not saying like Filipinos are not in the busy life, but they enjoy the life they have. In Korea, they're really straight to what they have to yeah. do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why. For example, I would ask my friend, Hey, do you want to hang out? My Korean friends would be like, Oh, Beyond, I have to study. Oh, mm. Beyond, I have alba, part-time <laughs> job. Oh, Beyond, I have quiet to go. Like, I have to tutor somebody. When it comes to my Filipino friends, oh, yeah, sure, G. G, <laughs> G. Uh, there's no such thing as part-time jobs or because I have to study. Well, there are some friends, but not, less, so not so much. I miss their caring. What I felt when we go back to Korea, there was less caring 
carrying than before. Because before when I was kid in there, it was a carrying from like a neighbors, carrying from our own town. But I cannot feel that anymore in Korea, but I can feel it in here because Filipino cares about people around you. Not only the friends, but even my house broker, house owners, they care about me. Like they just kept my baggage for two years without charging anything. Wow. Yeah. Wow. They're, they're caring. That's true. Wow. Yeah. And when it becomes Christmas or when it becomes a holiday, they just have homemade food. Wow. When they go to the vacation and when they come back, they come with the buku pie and they oh. give it to me <laughs> as a present. And then, wow. yeah, people so much cares about people around them in here. So that's all they miss. While coming back from Korea to here, there was a one guy who was seated beside him in the plane. And actually, I saw the POSIC pass on his iPad and then I asked, do we really need that? And then surprisingly, he speaks in Korean. He's, he's Filipino, a, right? Yeah, he's Filipino. He's the prof in the UP, but he mm. just went back to Korea just for his friend's for, marriage. Uh, and then when I said, I'm also living in Pasig, and then he said, then just go, go to me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> super friendly. Yeah, yeah, super friendly. At first, I needed to think that it might be a kidnap or something. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> But yeah. he was so friendly. So did you write? Yeah, I got it. I just Ooh. wrote it and then... Unexpected, but wow. they, they got friends. Yeah, yeah, I got friends and then he just dropped me out in my condo and then he even solved my problem in there because okay. my house owner said the key is in the lobby and then the guard in the lobby they said they do not have any key so I was like then what should I do? <laughs> Where's my home? And then that guy the one who fetched me was outside and then he just saw me I was rooming around the lobby and then he just came in and then Oh well, he didn't leave? Yeah he didn't leave well, he just saw me that I was rooming around and then he just <laughs> came inside in the lobby and then he asked hey Blake what's the problem? They said they do not have my key and then he just solved the problem in that place so where was the key they had but they didn't know that they had because oh. the, the one who got the key didn't tell them <laughs> that oh. it was there in the time oh, oh, nice. an angel yeah. now that you've fully experienced living in both countries what do you think the philippines could learn from south korea and south korea from the philippines the systems Oh yeah, yeah I, I thought about that. Yeah, the government systems, transportation systems are faster in Korea. No offense. Because <laughs> <laughs> when you go to the like governments like a uh, MBA okay. clearance yeah. or bureau quarantines, you have to go there early and then you have to wait tons of time. <laughs> Just for that, but in Korea, when you go there, you don't have to wait that much. I think this kind of changes starts with the small systems first. Like for yeah. example, escalators. In mm -hmm. Korea, if there's like one escalator, it's divided into two lines. One would be like oh, people, yeah. Yeah, standing. people like standing, standing, just staying in that place. And the other one would be like people who are in a hurry. So they have yeah. to like run. Mm -hmm. So that kind of small system at first, if Filipinos can do that kind of system, get used to that system, I think slowly these Actually, kind of bigger systems yeah. will work out. Already. Oh really? They do that. Yeah, really. They tried. <laughs> the pandemic. Oh. Right. Yeah, they did. So when you go to the mega mall or when you go to oh, the seriously? MRT, yeah, oh yeah, I, I have have experienced that. A walk and stand. I I was in Lego Mall just <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, I, I wasn't in a hurry, but like, okay, we just need that small that full, division, yeah. you know? I think when the pandemic kicked in, they stopped doing it because the social distancing. Uh, uh, I have one more to say. For the transportation in Philippines, I'm not sure how they adopted it or where they adopted it, but have you ever noticed the bus on the Etsa? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the busway is on the left side, right? Yeah. But the thing is, the door of the bus mm -hmm. is on the right side. <laughs> oh! Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, have you ever noticed it? I didn't notice that, but then it makes yeah. sense what you're the, saying. So, the people should stay in the middle of the road, oh. and then to get the bus, they should go round. Oh my god. And then get the, the bus on the right side. <gasps> Because before it was on the right side, right? Yeah. The bus road was on the right side, but they made the bikers lane and yeah. then they changed the bus lane to the left side, which made those kind of problems. Yeah. So if they needed to adopt those kind of systems, they needed to change the buses also, I think. I think they just need to change the bicycle road yeah. to yeah. another way. Oh. So so left some kind, left. Somehow it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Why did oh, they put it on the that's right? That's a nice point. Yeah. 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 Uh, what could Korea learn from Philippines? What could Korea learn? Chill vibe. Yeah. Mindset of the people. Mm. Yeah. People in Korea, they have something to do. They really want to finish it early and enjoy their free time after that. But in the Philippines, like for example, in holiday or a Christmas yesterday, like that. And people in Korea, they even try to earn m much more money even on holiday. So they work harder. But in the Philippines, people tend to enjoy the holiday. So they close 
post office or a restaurant like that. They there's need to call there's and so the care. like workaholics, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so much rushing. They're very realistic Koreans. Their objective is more of money than happiness, mm -hmm. you know. And I think Philippines for some people would be money, but more of them is happiness. Yeah, yeah. they would choose happiness over money. And also, let's talk about the Christmas itself. So people in here see the opportunity of the getting happiness. And then in Korea, they see the opportunity to get the like extra charge of the money, extra charge of the part-time job, mm -hmm. or look itself as an event. Mm -hmm. Events that people will go out, more people in, the, in this place, we can get some money from them. Yeah. Think, think slow. Mm -hmm. You know, just think enjoy the moment. Slow. Really. Mm -hmm. In Korea, I'm not kidding, but... I'm a teacher there, but my kids, after kindergarten, they would just go to hagons like mm -hmm. piano, um, math, art, and science. They go out of school at 2, but they come home at 7 or 8. I thought all this time that, oh, since you're going home early, like you could go home and rest. I was like, no, I come home 7. <sighs> but what do you do? Hagon. Yeah. How many? Mm. Four. They have this schedule, routine, Four. and busy. I know they're young and they could learn as much as they can because they're a sponge. But I think like it's just too much. Yeah. Like mentally and physically. They kill themselves mm. so strictly. Yeah, and it, it's all happening at a young age. In the Philippines, do five years olds do that? They might go to like play school or like they learn art. But then in Korea, it's like learning, learning. It's not just because Study they love more, it. Yeah. More not studying because, yeah, more of like studying academics. for enriching their skills, not because of hobby or passion. That's one thing the parents of Koreans or like the adults in Korea should learn from the Philippines. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For me, like they also need to care about the other people. The world changed and after the pandemic, people really focus on their individual life yeah. and mm -hmm. don't care about the other people, what mm -hmm. they do, what they really feel. So the people need to look other people around of them and then cares about together and live together with the others so it will help people feel calm and peaceful too.